You, it seems like you are, you, you're very good at this, but also seems like you're very passionate. And you are always very open to share your knowledge. So if somebody wants to learn more about real estate, or let's say if somebody wants to apply for a job to work for Mark, what is the best way to reach you at, or what is the, how, how to best go about it? Well, they can contact me via email at mam at apartmentcorp.com, which is Mary Andrew Mary at apartmentcorp.com. I'll include it in the link. Okay. Or they can phone me. My phone number is readily available. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, uh, it's a business that you not get rich at quickly. It's something that takes at least 10 to 20 years to make a lot of money at. Mm -hmm. And you're in this business for... Um, it's a career. Mm -hmm. It's not a get rich quick scheme. Long term. Long term. Self investment, but obviously. And then you're basically working hard at it at the beginning so you don't have to work hard when you go to retirement because mm -hmm. you're getting all that revenue that you created um, and all, the, all those assets that you bought. You're really, it's a, it's a uh, compounding thing where every apartment building you buy is making money, making money for you in the future and it's also uh, inflation protected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if people want to learn more and, you know, want to want to choose this career besides being really good at math and you said math at very basic level, just like long term in self investment and, you know, they can make some money, serious money. I suggest that they go to work for somebody for six months or a year, almost for free if they can, uh -huh. just to learn what to do, because it's uh -huh. not that difficult to learn. But if you learn the wrong things, you're not going to do well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you something that I, I sometimes I'm not very clear of what it means. You buy, let's say, this is not regarding apartment buildings. You buy a house. What does it mean to refinance the house? How can you explain this like very simple, in simple terms? Refinance. Well, refinancing a house is basically um, you buy it with a original what's called purchase money mortgage or a loan. Mm -hmm. And then you go out and after a period of time, the house appreciates or the, rate, the interest rate goes down or a combination of both. You get a new loan, mm -hmm. and that loan could be more money than the current loan, and therefore the refinance is um, you would be basically pulling cash out of your house, or it would be basically paying you to, um, you know, if you bought the house, let's say, for a million dollars, and now the house is worth $2 million, and you got a 50% loan on both times, you would get the whole million back, and, and it's, non -tax it's a non-taxable transaction. Even when you take it out, it's non-taxable? Yeah, because it's a loan. Hmm. Is it, uh, if you have lots of cash at hand, is it better to buy a house in cash and pay everything in full, or is it better to get a loan and do a mortgage Better to payments? get a loan. I get that question all the time. Why is that? A house is a place where you live in, mm -hmm. and um, it should be used for the enjoyment of living in. It should not be used really as an investment vehicle, uh -huh. even though most people consider it their primary investment. Um, most people go for these. The worst thing you can do is get a 30 year loan on the place, too. Mm -hmm. Most people don't live in their houses for 30 years and they want to pay off their house. So you're paying a premium on the interest rate for a, ve a financial vehicle that you're never going to fully take advantage of. Mm -hmm. I typically re recommend getting a 10 or a 15 year loan at the cheapest interest rate you can get mm -hmm. and not paying any principal reduction on there unless you want to pay down the house for like a savings account. Hmm. But, you know, once you pay the bank back that money, the, the, the equity is sitting and you can never use that equity for anything else. Mm -hmm. I see. Interesting. These are very good lessons. Uh, also, I want to ask you a little bit about, uh, you helped me a lot, Mark. Really, you helped me a lot. You helped me with the movie. I remember, Mark, you always have like, such a luxurious cars. Uh -huh. And you gave me your Rolls Royce. You gave me your Bentley to use it in my movie. And that helped a lot. But more than that, you help me with lessons, life lessons that are, it's, it's, it's terrific. Like nobody ever taught me that. And one of the major things that Mark taught me is you told me, Attila, never assume things. Never assume things because you don't know. And naturally, people always assume things. And I used to always assume. But then I saw so many examples when I got your Rolls Royce to film the scene. Just because I'm showing up on a set with a very super fancy car, people look at me differently. And more than that, you know, I never had money to make like to get the permits mm -hmm. or to film it legally in L.A. Because you know how hard it is to yeah, film yeah, in L.A. Yeah. And all the paper applications is like huge. <laughs> so but because I showed up in a Rolls Royce, people assumed 
that I'm a professional. People assume that I have a permit. So the, even the police mark, they mm -hmm. never ask me. They came to my location. They said, what are you guys doing? I said, I'm filming. They see the car. They say, hey, your car, nice car. They don't, they don't even ask if it's my car, you know? And so you know, even in that way, indirectly, it helped me a lot to get some of the movie sets. I think uh, people making assumptions are, is the biggest problem in society we have today. And it's the one that every single person does. It's like built into, it's like humans are hardwired to make assumptions. Yeah. And I do, I did one time did a study of myself and I calculated every time I assumed something what my percentage of accuracy was and it was always, I was about 90% wrong. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So I basically, I'm trying to be cognizant of when I make an assumption and realize that it's just basically a real guess and uh -huh. it's based on previous experiences. And the way people think are never the way I think. I'm a very different kind of thinker. Uh -huh. I think most people, um, the way that they perceive themselves as thinking is different from everybody else's. And uh, um, it creates a lot of problems for people when they start making a lot of assumptions. I think the reason why the, the biggest assumers are also the people that have the hardest amount of time in life is when they go out there and they see something, they make an assumption and they make a really bad decision that's life affecting. Interesting. But also, I feel like assumption is a double-edged sword, and we can always use it into our advantage, such as I did when I show up with your Rolls Royce. Even when I go to the gym, people perceive me differently, and sometimes I don't have to pay for parking. Sometimes they that's come going, in. That's, that's different, though. That's based on experience that you had with successful experiences. Uh -huh. So you basically flipped it from a, 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 an assumption to an experience that you said, well, hey, this is working three out of four times. I'm going to continue to do it. Yeah. And, you know, very often you have to make assumptions, you know, we all have to make assumptions because that's the way life works. Uh -huh. But you can only, then that's the reason why assumptions work and don't work sometimes is because you're going based on your past experiences in life, which may or may not be accurate. Uh -huh. So obviously um, it pays to take, make assumptions when things aren't life critical. But when you're making really big assumptions, I find usually you can ask somebody and get the real data most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. But that's interesting what you said, like you did your assumption test and 90% of the time it was wrong. So people can... So I'm really it. bad at assumptions and fortunately I learned that I do that all the time. Somebody said you shouldn't make assumptions like that uh -huh. and then I realized, you know, he's right. The person who told me that. And then I make less assumptions. I still make them because I'm built in, it's built into yeah. my system. Like you said, it's built into everybody's system. And I also want to mention, when I was working for you, I did everything, you know, from driving to learning real estate to bringing you deals. I even connected you with some people that yeah. invested some money in your properties. Remember that? Yeah. And, but also working for Mark, I was, thanks to you, I was exposed to your phone conversations. I was able to firsthand witness how you handle different business challenges. I was able to witness how somebody as successful as you are, how do you solve, how you use your creativity to solve different problems, you know, and you always find a solution. It doesn't matter how minuscule the problem is, there is always assumption. And more importantly, you always also said, never take no for an answer, you know, and such a simple lessons. It's words. Everybody knows I, that. I can't believe but, how many people take no for an answer. That's one of the biggest things yeah. that people have in society is yeah. they take no. That's what stops most people from yeah. being successful. But working, working for you, Mark, all those, like I worked for you for a couple of years and I learned those things because I was, I was next to you, you know, all day pretty much. And I was experiencing what you are accomplishing by these little life lessons that most of the time people don't even consider, you know. So it was a tremendous experience. And like you said, you know. When I hire somebody, the hardest part I have to do is train them like I did with you, yeah. is to get them to stop making assumptions and stop taking no for answers. Yeah. Yeah. That's very frustrating because most people get very frustrated when I tell them that they don't have to take no for an answer. They're used to taking no for an answer. And when they start making assumptions, they get frustrated because it's so built in and automatic. Yeah. They don't feel comfortable. They got upset they sometimes. Get, they get very upset. But I try and train every person that works directly around me not to yeah. make assumptions. See, it was a very good training. And that turned me, a lot, that turned me around big time, Mark. Yeah. And it was very hard for me to, you know, once I left, it was very hard for me to meet with you in person because I really, I like you so much, seriously. But it was very hard to meet with you because 
I felt like I, I'm not at your level, you know? Like, well, I hope that you feel like you can inter do this. Inter intellectually, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because every time when you say something, and even it, if it upsets, upsets me, but it makes sense. So very rarely during those two years, I got into trouble or anything alike that was something that I wasn't responsible for. So I very much appreciate how direct you are mm -hmm. and not sugarcoating. Uh, most of the LA people are sugarcoating. Yeah. So everything is slow here. Nothing never happens in LA, you know. So, but you are from New York, right? Yeah. So it's a different kind of mentality. And so if people, you know, if anybody would like to work for you, give them the email address. And then if they want to learn, if they have a thick skin, because it doesn't matter the industry, it doesn't matter the business, I feel like people have to have a thick skin to succeed, you know. So try they it do, out for six months. Because people are always going to get in their way. And especially when you're trying something that you've never done before, you can't assume anything. Uh -huh. And there's always somebody that knows more than you and you should learn from them. Yeah. But how come you are you're thinking like that? It is something that your parents raised you like that? Or what is the reason that you're like such a clear, you always have a clear mind? I got my head kicked in a lot when I was in my 20s. Meaning? I mean, lots basically, of I, I had lots of painful failures. And I made so many failures. And then I asked people what I'm doing wrong. And then they didn't say that I'm assuming a lot. But it was I, I was able to, they would look at me like, why would you assume that? And I'm saying, I never thought about it that way. So then I realized what I was doing wrong. And then I stopped assuming. Yeah. And it takes time and lots of open mind. You, so. you have to be self-aware. That's a really hard thing for most people to become, is to be open-minded and realize real, who you are. Only and the biggest artists are like that. What? Know? Only the biggest artists yeah. are self-aware, even in real estate. Yeah, I mean, you know, to, to become self-aware is a whole process that you have to go through. I don't know, I just, through my life experiences, became that way. I think even my parents were not that way. And, um, I just find that most successful people are very... They always, there's, there's always things like don't take a, uh, don't confuse a compliment with a contract. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one other lesson that I've learned. So if somebody tells you you have a great product, but it, they don't, they don't want to buy it from you, then it really, you're not, you know, better off than you were before. I guess I, w I was partners with a guy named Tom O'Malia, who was my professor at USC, and he had all these pearls of wisdom, and I ran into across a lot of other people that like that. And then I said, you know what, I need to start listening to these people because... They had it figured out, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I just be became a sponge for all that kind of stuff. So you got all that knowledge from the experience. Yeah, people. from my experience, I had. I started trying to do my own businesses when I was in my, when I was 21. Literally the day after I graduated from college, I started my own company, and started working like ridiculous hours of 80 hours a week mm -hmm. to try and make myself successful. Uh, had some successes, had some failures, but eventually, when I found my my niche. I basically stayed with it. And I think anybody who wants to be successful, even if they work for somebody else, has to have a niche in life. When you find your niche, did you know this is, this is your calling? Or how did you figure out this is what you want to do? When you smelled the niche after so many failures, how did you know it's a niche? It was easy for me to make money in, and it was replicatable. Replicatable I could, meaning? I mean, I can do it over and over again. How do you decide who, do, who, who you're going to become partners with? Uh, partners is always a complicated thing. Um, it's, a, it's a very complicated. They have to bring more to the table than I have to offer. They have to add certain kind of value to, you, yeah. to your business. Otherwise, it right. doesn't make much sense. Right. Yeah. Cool, Mark. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to provide your email address in the description okay. and also in the link. So if somebody wants to reach out, uh, either that for a jo job opportunity or to learn. They know how to contact you. Um, so I think it's going to be very interesting. Thank you also for everything that you taught me. Okay. And hopefully I'm working smarter right now and better. That is why last year was pretty successful for me because well, the lessons great. I learned. I'm always grateful to hear that somebody actually paid attention to what I had to say. No, like, you know, like when he says time values, time values the money, you know, don't, don't assume things. Don't take no for an answer, you know. If you want to partner with somebody, that somebody else has to add value to you. Simple things, but you know, I learned it from him. And being direct, I learned it from you. So it was a great experience, really. And the only way I can repay you ever is to become successful. 
and then partner up with you on some really good Absolutely. real, real estate deals. That would be great. That would be so great. that's what I'm looking forward to right now, you know? Okay. Mark, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Always so good to see you. It's good, and I appreciate the fact that you remember everything that I uh, imparted to you. Well, I'm, you know, we didn't talk that often, but like when you tell me things and when you text me, like, how are you doing that and things like that, I always tear up and I tell my sister, my, my, I'm going to tear up right now because I really have a great appreciation for you. My sister was like, how is Mark doing? What did you learn from Mark? So we always talk about you, okay, you know? Great. And then when she comes over, I'll, I'll bring her so you can, you know, meet with her, give her a couple of lessons. So it's amazing. And okay. I'm so happy that you are doing well. And he just got a brand new yacht in Miami that he's renting out to some successful people and flying drones and stuff. So yeah. can you give us some footage if you have, you can send it to me All right, so I well. can put it in this video so you guys know the yacht that I'm talking about, how it looks like, you know? All right, and, we'll do you that. Know, amazing. Thank you very much once again. Okay, Appreciate thank you it. for uh, taking the time out to spend with me to reflect on all these things. I'm very happy to do so. Thank okay, you, thank you. Thank you.